It's called by different names. Cannabis, marijuana, pot, weed, or ganja. And for decades, this drug was illegal in all of Asia. But on June 2022, Thailand became the exception. It is now legal to buy cannabis and grow it at home. If the government don't change their mind, this situation will have lower IQ, will have many psychiatric problems. Since then, cannabis shops have multiplied. Has Thailand's move to liberalize cannabis use spiraled out of control? ไม่มีอะไรทํากระนั่งเพื่อนเพราะว่ามาไม่มีอะไรทํามันมันเบื่อมากมันว่างมากก็เลยเปิดยูทูบดูนี่มันปลุกอย่างเงี้ยเพรา
to improve sleep and appetite. We use it as a single herb and also in the combination with the other herbs as well. A turning point happened in 1925 when the government no longer thought of cannabis as a traditional herb and medicine and classified cannabis medicine, food with cannabis and cannabis resin as a narcotic. In 1934, it introduced jail time and fine for possession and use of cannabis. But that didn't stop the hill tribes in northeastern Thailand from growing it illegally. A potent variety of cannabis thrives here. The Thai stick, named after the cigar-like product that the buds are made into. In the past, marijuana was banned narcotic, but it's a well-known fact that many Thai rural households have marijuana in their backyard, in their pot somewhere, and have been using it secretly, privately. According to historian and author Peter Maguire, American soldiers stationed in Thailand during the Vietnam War smuggled the Thai stick in the US, generating a windfall for Thai farmers illegally. Due to its potency, the Thai stick gained fame as the Cuban cigar of the marijuana world. In no time, the legendary Thai stick was also smuggled into Australia and Europe. In 1971, the government tightened its rules further. It classified cannabis as a Schedule I narcotic, deeming it to be a substance that poses a serious public health risk and has no therapeutic value. Through the next five decades, the drug was reclassified a couple of times, but it remained firmly an illicit substance. The winds of change came only when medical marijuana grew popular in the West. It led Thailand to explore how the Thai stick can help their economy and healthcare system. That's when Dr. Pakakrong Kwan Kao was tasked by the government with collecting new scientific evidence supporting its use as medicine. We have history of use this kind of plant for a long, long time. Before we legalize cannabis, we also have some policy to promote herbal medicine. And there is an opportunity for medical cannabis as you know, in Thailand, we do not have many factories that can produce modern medicine or even what we call active pharmaceutical ingredients. Many of them we import from the other country. Dr. Kwan Kao's research paved the way for the production of cannabis oil in Thailand to be used as therapy. The research that we have done so far is held to control or relieve symptoms of many diseases. For example, the end-state cancer patient, they may have like, they cannot eat well, they cannot sleep well. What we do is for the patient who does not respond well to standard treatment, we add cannabis. We don't use it as the first line. Um, it means that when the patient comes, we give them cannabis. No, we don't do that. Okay. With the economic potential of medical cannabis in its crosshairs, Thailand announced it would liberalize cannabis in late 2018. It allowed licensed clinics to administer cannabis for 38 medical conditions. To give rural communities a share of the bounty, pilot projects were started to allow villagers to grow up to six pots of cannabis to supply to hospitals. Suddenly, an activity that carries a long jail sentence in the rest of the region is not only legal, but encouraged. It was the start of a very slippery slope. <laughs> ก็คือว่าพวกผมก็ปลูกกันเองครับก็คือมีบ้านก็ทําตอนนี้มีบ้านอยู่ครับ
คือคิดเคยคือเคยลองแบบดูดูจะดูเป็นมวลอะไรเป็นมวลของหมาที่ทำก็คือในในกรณีอย่างนั้นจริงๆก็ทำไม่ได้สามคำ On February 18, 2019. Thailand officially became the first country in Southeast Asia to legalize cannabis for medical use. By November that year, 14,000 patients had received prescribed cannabis medicines, albeit with low THC content for 38 medical conditions. They range from Parkinson's disease to insomnia. After years of being seen as an illicit drug, public perception towards cannabis was once again shifting. It was around this time that Jeff and his friends got their hands on a stash of cannabis from a friend. Within two years, Jeff, then 15, was growing his own cannabis. At that time, cannabis was still a year away from being completely decriminalized. It was legal to grow it in limited quantities, but only for specific medical conditions. Jeff did not suffer from any of the conditions, but he lit up anyway. <laughs> But one day, a neighbor did complain, and the police came knocking on Jeff's door. Fearing arrest, Jeff tries to destroy any evidence that might link him to the drug. Despite that close shave with the law, Jeff has no intention to stop smoking cannabis. But Jeff would not need to fear and play the cat and mouse game with the police for long. By that time, there were already whips that change was in the air. Twenty nineteen, Thailand was in the grips of election fever. The first polls since the military coup in 2014. But making headlines was a mid-sized party that garnered barely 4% of the vote in the last poll, led by Anutin Chan Virakun. Bumjai Thai party was campaigning for cannabis, then already allowed for medical use to be decriminalized entirely. Mr. Anutin sold the idea that farmers could get rich from growing cannabis. The idea struck a chord. With farmers easily making up to a third of the electorate, the farming vote gave Bumjai Thai 10% of the popular vote, a huge improvement from its previous showing. It made the party a major ruling coalition partner and Mr. Anutin a deputy prime minister and a health minister. Anutin delivered on his election promise three years after his victory. On June 9, 2022, he issued a ministerial announcement delisting cannabis as a narcotic. We didn't think that they would just, let's just say, drop the bomb by just decriminalizing it on June 9, which was 
surprise a lot of people. Suddenly, the stringent laws and stiff penalties governing narcotics no longer apply to cannabis. Have it was a hasty move because there was a political motive of the second largest government party, Phum Jai Thai Party. The party campaign on promising to liberalize the use of marijuana during the 2019 general election. After the bombshell, cannabis exploded into the open. It was sold on the streets, at public events, and in dispensaries that sprouted across the city. The government said marijuana should only be used for medical purposes. Yet everyone presumed recreational use was permitted. We came to this confusing stage because there is no law to regulate or to stop recreational use of marijuana. And once you take the marijuana off the list of banned narcotics, the police will not take any action for those who use it because marijuana is no longer a banned narcotic. Within a week of the announcement, several persons were hospitalized after consuming or smoking marijuana, including four teenagers who overdosed. Public outrage ensued. Kitty Chopaka is dubbed the mother of the Thai cannabis industry. She's a longtime advocate for legalization of cannabis in Thailand. Her dream has come true. Yet, she's dismayed by the way legalization was rolled out. After the listing happened, I was very angry because I'm one of those who, I work well in frameworks and there's no frameworks and then I can't plan my business. I don't know what, um, what will be my cost, what will be my revenue. I was very angry. At the same time, I don't see it happening any other way. A week after cannabis was decriminalized, the Thai Health Ministry tries to play catch up, publishing a series of new rules in the Royal Gazette, the official platform for government edicts. Among the new regulations announced, forbidding the sale of cannabis and the use of the drug by youths below 20 years of age, as well as pregnant and breastfeeding women, banning cannabis from schools, categorizing the flower buds as a controlled substance so shops must have a license before they can sell them, and forbidding smoking of cannabis in public. But the new rules come without arrangements for enforcement. Yes, there are fine as punishment for breaking the rules announced by the Ministry of Public Health. But do they have enough public health officials to go and catch people breaking the rules? They don't have enough manpower to do that. Despite the lack of enforcement, some rules seem to have gained some traction, at least at first. While the growing of marijuana for medical purposes has been legal since 2018, when the health ministry delisted cannabis as a narcotic, it imposed a new requirement. Registering on the app, Pluk Ganja. It's a bid by the ministry to track the number of growers. On the first day, so many people heeded the rule that the app crashed on the day of the announcement after receiving 9 million applications. That's 12% of the Thai population. Tony wasn't among the millions trying to register as a grower. Tony's sentiments point to the possibility that there could be far more cannabis growers in Thailand than 9 million. They don't see it. It's a 
มันก็ไม่เห็นอยู่แล้วอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็ไม่ได้แบบอีกอย่างนึงก็แบบมันไม่ได้แบบทําให้ใครรู้สึกว่ามันแบบกลัวหรือว่าอะไรด้วยอะไรอย่างเงี้ยประมาณนั้นไม่ไม่ไม่ได้เรียกว่าขายแบบไม่ได้กะแบบทําทําขายคือมันก็มีเพื่อนมาแหละแล้วก็มีเพื่อนนะที่แบบชอบชอบสมองเหมือนกันอะไรเงี้ยแล้วเข้ามาแล้วก็เพื่อนก็ถามว่าเอามาดูผมบอกขอได้ว่าบอกเอามาดิเอามาเลยอะไรเงี้ยเพื่อนบอกว่าเฮ้ยไม่ได้ดิมันของมีต้นทุนเนี่ยข้าวใส่ข้าวปุ๋ยข้าวเลยเนี่ยขายไม่ขายดิทําแบบนี้แบบนี้โอ้เลยบอกเฮ้ยไม่ไม่ขายแล้วกันเอาแบกให้แล้วกันรายได้ทั้งหมดอะค่ารายรับทั้งหมดต่อเดือนประมาณสี่ถึงแปดหมื่นต่อเดือนประมาณนั้น I don't see the actual need for licensing to grow. To tell you the truth, unless you are growing for commercial, but I want to see control within the sale. I'm not saying that cannabis is like all good, perfectly great. Youth and children should not have access to it, just like alcohol. I have a guard in front of our shop. We checked. ID every single purchase, or even before you go into the shop. We forced that in before any rules were existed. We make sure there's already a sign that goes out from the day one that we do not sell to anyone below the age of 20. ID is required. I have kids. I understand as a parent how scary something not knowing can be, and I want to be someone who can say with full heart that I'm doing this right. Over where 17-year-old Jeff lives, there are 10 weed shops. I've seen children who have been able to get into the shop. I've seen it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. But if I get into the shop, I won't get into the shop. I won't get into the shop. But whether he can buy his cannabis is no longer an issue Jeff worries about. I won't get into the shop. I won't get into the shop. ได้เม็ดมาก็พอปลูกพอพาะขึ้นต้นออกดอกเสร็จก็เอาเม็ดของเขามาปลูกอีกทีครับตอนนั้นได้มเมล็ดมาจากพ่อของเพื่อนอีกทีนึงครับก็คือว่าพ่อผมพาะปลูกกันเองครับก็คือมีทุกบ้านเพื่อนผมตอนนี้มีทุกบ้านนะครับ What will happen when you have your own marijuana planting in your backyard? You can smoke it at home. It's not against the law, and that is the confusing part. And that's why we need a new comprehensive law. ตอนนั้นยังมันยังไม่แบบยังไม่ได้แบบคนปลูกเยอะขนาดนี้ข้อมูลยังไม่ได้เยอะขนาดนี้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยคนขายมือสองก็มีพวกมือสองไว้ปลูกซื้อมาลองปลูกปลูกไม่เป็นปลูกไม่ได้ก็ขายพิเชตชวงมุงพาน is an opposition member in the House of Representatives from Chiang Rai a Thai province that borders the Golden Triangle a notorious opium producing region where the borders of Thailand Myanmar and Laos meet given Chiang Rai struggle with drugs from the Golden Triangle Mr. Pichet is against the complete decriminalization of cannabis. Ah, the Ham Yam Nong Kam is the 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 as it is, statistics already show that three in ten smokers become addicts. They cannot be sober and uh, doing uh, daily life without cannabis. If they don't have cannabis in their system, they will feel crave or very like hunger for the substance. 
and can live our lives normally because everything is under the influence of the substance. And the fallout from that abundant supply is already showing up in hospitals around the country. Dr. Smith Srisonth is a forensic toxicologist. It is part of his job to screen dead bodies for traces of illicit drugs. Cannabis may not be the cause of death. Sometimes they involve in the cause of death. Such as they use them and have the accident. So we examine it and it's involved. And since the decriminalization, Dr. Smith has seen a spike in the number of cadavers testing positive for traces of THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol, the psychoactive component of cannabis. If there is a negative, it must be two right. But only one lie is mean it's positive. And it's not just the morgue that's seeing more instances of cannabis consumption. In the three months after the delisting of cannabis as a narcotic, the emergency room of Dr. Smith's hospital also saw 161 patients for cannabis intoxication. 46 or 28% of them fell ill after consuming cannabis-laced products like drinks, brownies and cookies. So the report is three times more than the same month as last year. The risk of death directly due to cannabis overdose is low, but THC can raise blood pressure and heart rate. And for someone with cardiovascular problems, this can cause a heart attack. High doses of THC can also trigger psychosis, which can lead to fatal accidents. <laughs> That is why Dr. Smith is disturbed by the casual approach taken by the Thai health minister towards cannabis. This YouTube is about health of mystery and another doctor in the mystery who cannabis with some of the Thai food and show to the people how to cook it or everything. Thai health minister Anutin Chan Virakun insists that cannabis is legalized for medical purposes and health care. Yet he has been seen promoting cannabis use in regular cooking. It's part of the health ministry's bid to revive a century-old practice of using cannabis in Thai cuisine. ผมก็รู้สึกหงุดหงิดนะครับว่าก็ยังมีหมอบางคนนะครับที่เห็นด้วยกับเรื่องนี้แล้วไม่พูดถึงข้อเสียของกัญชาพูดถึงข้อเส
increasing the load on emergency rooms. But despite the warning, cannabis food products continue to flood the market. Three months later, the health ministry finally tries to tighten the rules on such food products. Instead of a generous blanket 0.2% THC concentration for all cannabis-laced foods, the health ministry stipulates a much lower 0.0032% THC concentration for cannabis food products sold directly to consumers, such as cannabis condiments. And in so-called, quote, other food products, unquote, THC is capped at 1.6 milligrams per package. But even the new rules are coming under fire. Dr. Kukarun Kusong is a lecturer of biochemistry at Chulalung Korn University. She thinks the 1.6 milligrams cap per package is far too generous. So it's what I calculate for you. The law say, okay, it's 1.35 milligrams. But based on what recommend by the European standard, so you should have only quarter of this per day. But if I take this candy, I gonna just have one piece. I'm not just, I'm not gonna divide it by four. And people, they don't know that, right? The European safety guidelines take into consideration a person's weight and recommends taking in less than one microgram of THC per kilogram of body weight. In Thailand, the average weight for females is 55 kilograms. That means the safety threshold for an average Thai female should be no more than 0.055 milligrams, nearly 30 times less than the THC allowed in one single food item in Thailand. Even by Thailand's less stringent standards, it's clear some food products are failing to meet the mark. Brownie contains high fat, lots of oil, which is a good medium to dissolve THC. This brownie, it contains uh, 0.18 milligram per gram. So when we look at the package, it's 40 grams. So you multiply that, so now you have 7.2 milligram of THC per package. So actually, this one is above law. Worst of all, some of the products do not have labels giving consumption recommendations or warnings of THC content. It should be labeled clearly if it contains the THC or not. Some people have health problems. They don't want the THC. They eat it accidentally and suddenly they have to go to the hospital. So how can we protect these people who, don't, who actually they don't want the TSC? Among those most vulnerable are minors. According to the Ramakibodi Hospital, where Dr. Smith works, in the three months after cannabis was decriminalized, 39 patients below the age of 18 visited a doctor for cannabis intoxication. While most of them were using it recreationally, six of them took cannabis without knowing it, likely from cannabis-laced food. Um, this is probably the lightest. Kitty Chopaka shop in downtown Sukhumvit is famous for its so-called terpene-flavored gummies. Um, would you like to try them? So these are terpene gummies. There is no THC in them. Terpenes are aromatic compounds that give plants their distinctive smells. They are also found in tea, sage and citrus fruits. Unlike THC, terpenes will not get you high, but many do have anti-inflammatory properties. And Kitty is firm that confectionaries should stay THC free to prevent accidents involving children. I'm very angry within the industry itself. Why does it have to be gummies? Why does it have to be brownies? Why does it have to be things that kids and children want? 
I understand the whole nostalgia and like it's easy to sell those type of things to adults, but that's where mistakes happen. There's a higher chance of things kind of being misplaced and then a child eating it. You know, why don't make it into like say a hot sauce? An accidental ingestion is more serious than it appears. In 2019, researchers found significant differences in the brains of teens who had just had one or two marijuana experiences compared to those who were clean from the drug. I think if the government don't change their mind, it will be many problems. Such as this generation will have lower IQ, will have many psychiatric problems. Unbeknownst to Tony, as a teenager, smoking cannabis can have more long-term impact. Some studies show the drug can damage their brain's ability to learn, solve problems, and control impulses. And while cannabis is prescribed for insomnia for adults, new research suggests cannabis use at a young age could trigger insomnia instead. Tony, now 30, displays all of the symptoms. But he sees cannabis as an aid to his problems rather than the cause of them. <laughs> Current rules in Thailand bar minors from buying or using cannabis, but the age cap is set at age 20, which studies suggest could be too young. The brain of the adolescents are not fully developed. The frontal lobe, for example, fully developed at age 25. The adverse impact on young people has become one of the galvanizing arguments of those against cannabis. Dr. Smith is one of them. Today he is meeting Dr. Sahapum Sisuma, the head of Ramathipodi Hospital's poison center to gather supporting evidence. Dr. Smith is filing a lawsuit to nullify the decriminalization of cannabis. Dr. Smith's lawsuit stands a fighting chance because cannabis was not legalized via a law passed in parliament. Instead, it was delisted as a narcotic through an edict from the health ministry. An umbrella bill to govern cannabis use has been tabled in Parliament since December 2022. The cannabis and hemp bill sparked fierce debate leading one ruling coalition partner to split ranks to join the opposition. The ruling coalition in the House thought they should be able to pass the law quite quickly, but they didn't because one of the government parties, Democrat Party, third largest in the government, turned to oppose the bill. They want a more comprehensive law to regulate the use of marijuana because if it is for traditional medicine, then it should be going into that direction, not to allow free planting of marijuana in every household, or free use, free smoking at home. That kind of abuse should be stopped. 
because it is not for traditional medicine anymore. The first leading already passed, but then subsequent leading, the second and the final leading could not pass. And so now it's a stillborn. They have to wait until the next general election. The government of the Thai government has not seen the same way with this election. It is a good idea of the government that is wrong. To make the government that is wrong with the government that is wrong with the government that is wrong with the government. อนุทินต้องรับผิดชอบแล้วกลับไปเป็นยาเสพติดการเสพนี่สําคัญมากนะครับคุณปล่อยให้การเสพในที่ลับโดยที่ไม่มีใครเห็นเนี่ยนะครับมันเสี่ยงต่อเยาวชนเสี่ยงต่อการเสพติดดังนั้นเนี่ยโรงเรียนนะครับโรงเรียนปฐมโรงเรียนมัธยมมหาวิทยาลัยนะครับครูอาจารย์ต้องมีภาระเพิ่มมากขึ้นจากการสอนก็ต้องไปคอยดูแลนักเรียนคอยจับคอยเตือนนะครับคอยเรียกผู้ปกครองมาพบเกี่ยวกับว่าเยาวชนเสพกัญชาในแต่ละโรงเรียนอันนี้เพิ่มภาระให้กับทางโรงเรียนโดยไม่จําเป็นเดอะวัดซาลาแดงสกูลวิดสตูเดนต์เอจ11ถึง15รันส์แอนแอนตี้แคนนาบิสแอคทิวิตี้ของเด็กสตูเดนต์ a week after cannabis was legalized Bangkok's governor mandated that all 437 city-run schools were to ban cannabis in and near their premises and for teachers to educate its students about the health risks of cannabis สำหรับเพลงที่เด็กๆได้เต้นประกอบนะครับก็เป็นเพลงชื่อเพลงห่างกันนะครับผมก็สําหรับเพลงนะครับเด็กๆเ,เขาก็จะมีท่อนที่บอกถึงว่ากัญชามันอันตรายนะครับซึ่งเด็กๆเ,เขาก็จะไม่อยากจะไปรองโรงเรียนอะไรลูกโรงเรียนของหนูปลอดกัญชาและยาเสพนะเพราะว่าเด็กเด็กเด็กเองอ่ะเขาไม่ได้แบบอยากไปรองอยู่แล้วแต่เมื่อมันมาในรูปแบบขนมสีสันที่มันสวยงามเด็กอาจจะอยากลองเพราะว่าด้วยโปรดักต์ของขนมหรือว่ารูปแบบที่โฆษณาสื่อคนจริงเนี่ยเทได้ด้วยตนเองไม่ต้องพึ่งกัญชาและยาเสพติดนะถ้าเราอยากเป็นคนที่เพราะบางทีผู้ปกครองอ่ะพอบอกว่าเปิดเปิดเป็นเสรีเนี่ยบางทีคิดว่าที่บ้านเอามาปลูกได้ใครก็สามารถเอามาทานเอามาประกอบอาหารอะไรซึ่งเขาไม่รู้ในเรื่องของสารที่มันสามารถสกัดได้เท่าไหร่มันจะมีผลต่อร่างกายไหมปริมาณเท่าไหร่เพราะว่าโดยปกติแล้วชาวบ้านพื้นฐานเนี่ยเวลาที่เราเอามาต้มหรือเอามาผัดเอามาทอดอะไรก็แล้วแต่เราไม่รู้หรอกว่าเราบริโภคเข้าไปเท่าไหร่พอเรารู้อีกทีหนึ่งมันมันมีผลต่อร่างกายแล้วกังวลมากค่ะเพราะว่ามันออกมาแบบแบบใหม่หลายแบบแล้วค่ะตอนนี้ในเซเว่นก็มีน้ํากัญชาก็มีการป้องกันอยู่แต่ว่าในส่วนของชุมชนมันก็อาจจะมีหลายคนที่แอบขายเราก็ไม่รู้ใช่ไหมคะจากนั้นเราก็ควรทำสื่อความรู้ไว้เพื่อป้องกันดีกว่าค่ะเจนนี่ก็ยังไม่ออกจากถังเราจะเอาไปกลับที่ที่ทำงานเราจะต้องคุยกันต่อไปว่าเราจะคุยกันต่อไปอย่างไร What's going to happen to the businesses? What about people who open shop legitimately? Putting the genie back in the bottle is precisely what Dr. Smith is trying to do. Two weeks ago, he filed a lawsuit to declare the delisting of cannabis as a narcotic. He hopes in doing so would mean that the kingdom would revert to laws governing cannabis prior to decriminalization. Today, the court handed down its decision. I'm not sure that I don't have any issues. 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 I can't get it. I can't get it. I can't get it. But Dr. Smith is soldering on by filing an appeal in court. If the government don't change their mind, 
is it will be many problem. Such as this generation will have lower IQ, will have many psychiatric problem. Is this a scary future? I think it's very scary. พอเราไม่ได้ดูต่อเนื่องไม่ได้ดูไม่ได้ดูต่อเรื่อยๆเรื่อยๆแล้วมาหยุดที่เราดูมาเรื่อยๆแล้วมาหยุดก็คือว่ามันมีผลเสียก็คือว่าทํางานทํางานก็จะหงุดหงิดง่ายครับมันจะกระวนกระวายมันจะหงุดหงิดมันจะอยู่ไม่มันติดไปแล้วครับพี่มันเหมือนบุหรี่ครับเมื่อติดไปแล้วมันพยายามเลิกมันก็เลิกไม่ค่อยได้ครับเราต้องเป็นคนที่ดีที่สุด